All right, folks, welcome back to the show. If you were paying attention to Justin News last night, you might have saw a little bit of a news earthquake coming from Arizona. That's right, the man who made that uh, ripple last night is the Attorney General of the great state of Arizona, Mark Brnovich. A big 12-page report showing exactly what he is concerned about, what he's found in the counting of votes, particularly in Maricopa County, the largest um, uh, metropolitan area in all of Arizona. Joining us now to discuss that report, the border and so much more, is uh, the Attorney General himself, General Brnovich, good to have you on today. Thank you, John, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. I've been reading this report two or three times. Every time I read it, I pick up another fragment of just how concerned you are about the ability to count these mail-in votes. Arizona's got, what, 80% or more mail-in votes. Tell us what you found in Maricopa County that's so disturbing to you. One of the things, John, I just want to make sure we emphasize is that this is an interim report. This is part of our process. And, you know, I've been a gang prosecutor, federal prosecutor. And so when you're the government, you have to do things the right way. Sometimes people get frustrated because it may not be as quickly as they like. But it's important because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a litigator. I'm a prosecutor. I've literally argued cases at the Supreme Court. So it's important for us to get this right. And if you people do go and they read that interim report, they will find very troubling aspects of what happened during the 2020 election. And fundamentally, one of the greatest threats to election security and integrity is mail-in ballots and the handling of mail-in ballots. And don't just take my word for it. Literally, the worst president in the history of the United States before Joe Biden, Jimmy Carter, literally said yeah. the same thing you know, 17 years ago. And it's amazing how now the left and the Democrats don't seem to care about election integrity. So here in our report, we show that when it came to signature verification on the busiest day, I mean, you had hundreds of thousands of ballots where they were trying to verify signatures to the envelopes. And it was essentially it used about five seconds on average for verification. And, you know, when you think about it, there's not many things you can do, yet alone verify a signature in that limited amount of time. The other thing that I think really was so troubling for me as a, as a prosecutor is that in 20% of, you know, the drop boxes and the handling of these you know, ballots that were not collected, you know, actually at the polling place, the chain of custody was not followed 20% um, of the time. So, you know, literally we're talking of upwards of possibly 200,000 ballots where you did not have the proper chain of custody. We're talking about the way those ballots were handled and even the signatures of the people that were handling it. And so, you know, part of my frustration has been or is not only in these procedures not being followed, which creates so much potential for abuse, and uh, is that the county supervisors have dragged their feet when it's come to providing us information. I mean, if you read that report, I mean, I don't have civil subpoena power. So we have to like make requests and then they go through their lawyer and sometimes it takes months to get information back. So it is sometimes a process that, you know, we all wish can move a little quicker, but as I said, it's important to get it right. And the last thing just related to this in our report, I want to remind folks that I was the only statewide official when the state Senate uh, subpoenaed records from the board of supervisors. I was the only official that went into court that supported their right to subpoena records and do their audit. And so I am a big believer in the separation of powers and a big believer in our constitutional framework. And that means that we have to let the different branches of government do their respective jobs. Yeah, and you know, I talked to a lot of people since this report came out, and there's one word that everyone is using. This is a thoughtful report. It isn't rushed. It isn't political. It is fact-based, but also solution. You're searching for solutions to get this under control. What does Arizona need to do to fix Maricopa County particularly? Well, I think we all know what happened in 2020. And so it really starts with making sure that we continue to enact common sense election integrity measures. And so we're talking about voter ID laws. Um, we just saw the legislature pass a bill about uh, make, ensuring that only citizens are voting in our elections. We want to make sure that we have limitations in place on these drop boxes that don't have any sort of security. We want to make sure that there's consequences, that is penalties, uh, for people that you know don't follow the chain of custody or don't follow the proper election procedures. And you know we want to make sure that there's, quite frankly, protections for whistleblowers or for people that work for election officials that want to report any sort of uh, misconduct or problems with the way the elections are being conducted. So we want to make sure that everyone, no matter who you are, where you come from, that everyone has faith in the process. And importantly, that there's integrity in the process is that 
everyone can be confident that when they cast that ballot, that that ballot's going to be counted. It's not going to be not counted. And somebody else that isn't eligible to vote isn't voting in our elections. Yeah, so important. Uh, there's a lot of administrative things, a lot of things of holding county officials uh, accountable. Is there, in addition, do you see any criminality? Are you looking at criminal investigations, uh, additional charges? You brought some very important ballot harvesting cases that are uh, caught a lot of people's attention. Uh, do you see some criminality in the work that you've been uncovering? Well, John, in, in, as a prosecutor, once again, we're so limited legally and ethically, we can say, and, right. you know, I was talking to someone this morning, and I reminded them that we we have a dozen criminal cases right now related yep. to the 2020 election, everything from, you know, ballot harvesting to dead people voting, but I don't know what I can say. And, you know, I've taken on, just as an example, is I took on the higher education establishment here. I've taken positions, positions contrary to the Secretary of State all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And as a result of that, our office and our lawyers here get rewarded with bar complaints. And so literally, the Secretary of State filed bar complaints against us, the universities filed bar complaints, and I won a case at the state Supreme Court just this week, and I was told you know, by our lawyers that I'm limited what I can say. So think about that. That's what the left does. They demonize and destroy anyone that disagrees with them. And now, literally, when I go to the state Supreme Court and win a case, they're telling me I can't even talk about it. So um, I just I will assure everyone listening, watching that um, I take this stuff very, very seriously. And I understand, you know, as a first generation American whose family lived through communism, when you are the government, you have to do things the right way. I'm not like the clowns in New York where you throw stuff against the wall and then try to find facts and evidence to fi fix it. I am a, a good prosecutor because we're methodical and we do things the right way. And so. We do have an ongoing investigation continuing. And, you know, as I always tell folks, it's important to get it right, not fast when you're the government. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you, sir. And I think you people have seen what a quality investigation. This report is just really straightforward. No no politics. In it. It's just a straightforward assessment of what you've learned. I want to flip to the border because you've been a, a really important cogent voice about what's going on on the border. Title 42 looks like it might be uh, lifted unless the attorneys and generals who sued get that reversed. How big a crisis are we facing? And does this feel like an invasion? If you're in Arizona, does this feel like an invasion coming over your border every day? John, I actually was the first attorney general of the country to issue an opinion saying yes. that what's happening at our southern border constitutes an invasion. And here's the reality. Um, you know, I grew up here in Arizona, and I'm actually, the, my, my parents lived through World War II and communism, and so I'm a first-generation American. I know why people want to come to this country. It's because it's the greatest country in the world. And it's the greatest country in the world because we have a constitution and we have a system of rule of law in place. And what we are seeing at our southern border right now is essentially shredding the rule of law. So we've had to sue President Biden over his failure to build the wall over the Remain in Mexico policy. I mean, we literally just won a case um, in, this, in Ohio. We worked with the Ohio AG where we sued over their permanent guidance rules that essentially allow people that have been charged or convicted of crimes to not be deported, I mean, which is contrary to federal law. So the Title 42 is essentially the only thing right now, it's the only tool we have left in our toolbox that is stopping a further catastrophe. Revoking it right now, John, is essentially like throwing gasoline on a three alarm fire. It's, it's not humane, it is insane. It is unconscionable to buy administrations doing because the Title 42 is lifted. I mean, officials within the government are saying they're expecting a surge of more than 500,000 people illegally crossing our border in just uh, one month. I that's mean, unbelievable. That's, I mean, that's un what's going on right now? I mean, as I said, this isn't humane, it's insane, yeah. and it's not fair to anyone. It's not fair to the hardworking taxpayers that I was arguing on behalf of just a few weeks back at the U.S. Right. Supreme Court, where I took on the Biden administration over the withdrawal of the public charge rule where they're trying to give benefits to people that are non-citizens. So they're incentivizing this. It's unbelievable. I think you summed it up. I think a lot of Americans are nodding their head right now when they hear, not humane, it's insane. I think a lot of people are nodding their heads in agreement with you. Sir, it's an honor to have you on. We're watching everything you do. You're setting a, creating a lot of history with your court cases, and we hope to get you back on real soon. Thank you. We'll do, John. Thank you so much. Be safe, everybody. Thank you, sir. All right.